And a fine good morning to you, everyone. It's Saturday morning, and it's Russ Barkley back again for yet another weekly research review. Hey, did you know that we have reviewed more than 300 research papers on this channel over the last, oh, one year and three months? I think it's been since I started the channel. And I have had to screen more than 1,200 published studies to bring to you what I thought were the most noteworthy of the research on ADHD. So, wow, that's that's a lot. So, well, as always, we're going to start with our dad jokes and then get on to a discussion of about five articles this morning. First up for your dad jokes, and these come to us from the website, thecompanyofdads.com. First joke is, as you can see highlighted here, do you know why you never see elephants hiding in trees? It's because they're so good at it. <laughs> I love that one. Which days are the strongest, by the way? Okay, which days are the strongest? Why, Saturday and Sunday. All the rest are week days. Oh, nice pun there. Good play on words. Finally, I'm reading a horror story in Braille. Something bad is going to happen. I can just feel it. All right, enough of the sick dad jokes. Let's get on with our research findings for this week of October the 5th. The first paper up I wanted to talk about because it raises an issue that's not often discussed much in the trade media about ADHD, uh, but it is discussed in this paper. This is a research paper out of Florida International University down in Miami, and it's a study of a set of traits, behaviors, callous, unemotional behaviors in young children with ADHD. Now, why is that significant? Because callous, unemotional behaviors are the scientific psychological phrasing for psychopathic traits. So the traits for antisocial personality, what used to be called psychopathy, in the DSM include lack of guilt, lack of conscience, lack of remorse, being rather callous about other people and the things that happen to them, being unemotional when one should be upset by things. Uh, so we have found in the research literature that contrary to what people like Dr. Gabor Mate says and others, that ADHD individuals are not overly sensitive to their environment, as this study showed, even preschoolers with ADHD had elevations on ratings of these callous, callous, excuse me, unemotional behaviors that are risk factors, sort of temperamental factors, for the development of psychopathy and antisocial personality. Now. The authors engaged in a summer treatment program. They've been doing this for years, by the way, but in this case, it was directed at preschoolers rather than school-age children. And this summer treatment program includes a variety of behavioral interventions as well as medication treatment as needed and so on. That's not what's important here. What's important here is that they focused on the extent to which participation in the summer treatment program led to any change in this pattern of callous, unemotional behavior. And what they found, as they published over in the journal Evidence-Based Practice in Child and Adolescent Mental Health, so what they found was <clears throat> that children who went through the program and who had only, <clears throat> excuse me, ADHD, were the ones who showed a reduction in this set of traits of callous, unemotional behavior over the course of the treatment program. However, they found that those who had ADHD, along with other disruptive behavior disorders, like oppositional defiant disorder and conduct disorder, they did not show a reduction in their callous, unemotional traits. So, while the summer treatment program may be useful at reducing these behaviors, in young ADHD children, it doesn't do it very well for that subset, and it's a rather substantial subset of individuals who have an associated 
conduct or oppositional defiant disorder. And that's very important because what it shows is that trait, which we know underlies the risk or the proneness for later antisocial behavior and antisocial personality, that trait's very stable and it's hard to deal with it, hard to treat it. We've even found that while medication can help to reduce it somewhat, it doesn't reduce it completely. So just wanted you to know that there is this relationship of ADHD with callous and emotional behavior in those individuals at risk for oppositional behavior, conduct disorder, and later antisocial personality disorder. Okay, so that's enough on that study. Let's move on and take a look at a study that comes to us. Uh, this one, I believe, let's have a look. Why, yes, it's out of Iran. Very significant study out of Iran on the interaction between ADHD and distracted driving. In this case, the distractions were created by technology within the vehicle, such as the radio or, as you might guess, cell phones. And what they found is that in studying these teenagers, and they did use a, a rather nice sample of teens in this. So I'm just looking down here to see what the number was. Uh, well, that's okay. I can't seem to find it right offhand. But they compared ADHD teens to typical teens. Both of them participated in a driving simulator that allowed them to record a, a variety of measures. And then they looked at introducing distractions in the vehicle through interaction with a radio or with other technology. What they found is that having the radio or technology in the vehicle resulted in impaired driving in both groups. So we, we know about that. There's distracted driving that affects even typical drivers by having technology in the vehicle. But what they found that was significant, and by the way, is a replication of earlier research by others, what they found is that ADHD made it worse. There was a synergistic interaction between ADHD and the distracting technology, so that while ADHD individuals were worse drivers to begin with, they got even more impaired by the technology than did the typical individuals when you have ADHD and distractions interacting together in that vehicle. So uh, we've known about impaired driving and ADHD. I've talked about it in other videos on this channel, but this shows that distracted driving by having technology in the vehicle is even worse for people with ADHD, teenagers in this case, than for typical people, although it detrimentally affects the driving of both. So very nice study out of Iran. Our next study coming up is on the relationship of ADHD to risky and unhealthy behaviors in teens. And I believe this one is out of Israel. Uh, this is a study that looked at a substantial sample of teens, more than 4,600 of them. And out of that sample, they found 752 with a diagnosis of ADHD, and the remainder, over 3,800, served as the control group, the non-ADHD group. And they're looking at risky health behaviors in adolescence, and those include current use of tobacco, uh, smoking that is, including the use of hookahs, which are more popular over in the Middle East, as you know, alcohol consumption, excessive screen time greater than four hours per day, non-compliance with recommended levels of physical activity, less than an hour a day for that one, and non-compliance with sleep recommendations, less than eight or nine hours per day, respectively. They also determined that if you had at least three of those unhealthy risk behaviors, they classified the teens as having an unhealthy lifestyle. Well, you can imagine what they found because I've already talked on this channel in several videos about the increased health consequences of having ADHD. And ta-da, they found it over in Israel as well with their teenagers. What they found is that teens with ADHD were more than twice as likely to be smoking tobacco, 
they were 40% more likely to be consuming alcohol. They were 40% more likely to have excessive screen time engagement. And if we look at how many of them had three or more of those unhealthy behaviors, they found that they were twice as likely to have an unhealthy lifestyle overall. So rather substantial increases in risk there when it comes to health during adolescence being related to having ADHD. So a really nice paper published over in Public Health out of Israel. My fourth paper is over in a medical journal, and this one is on the relationship of pediatric extremity fractures to ADHD. And by the way, I think this one, let me just check. Yes, it is. This one comes to us out of Turkey. Do you see the pattern here? We're seeing a lot more research coming out of non-Western countries than we have previously. And as you know, I like to highlight that and celebrate this worldwide interest in studying ADHD. Okay, so in this paper, they're looking at all admissions that came into an emergency room trauma center for fractures of the extremities. And they had 100 individuals with fractures, and they compared them to a control group of individuals who did not experience fractures. And then they looked at the rates of ADHD symptoms in the two groups. And as you know from prior videos of mine on this channel, ADHD is associated with elevated risk of accidental injury of all kinds. And that's what they found here that ADHD symptoms, elevated symptoms, was associated with a marked increase in fractures, in having been in the emergency room previously for extremity fractures, and at having other risk factors as well that are related to ADHD. But specifically, they were focusing on ADHD symptoms and the relationship to extremity fracture and they found it. So again, we see a study in this case over in the Middle East rather than in the US that finds exactly what we find here, an elevation in accidental injuries, in this case, extremity fractures being associated with ADHD. Okay, my last study comes to us from the journal Research on Child and Adolescent Psychopathology. This is a study that is out of Chicago. And I wanna highlight it because first of all, the majority of participants in the study were black. Second, they came from an urban area. Finally, it's a substantial sample, over 600 individuals, and they were followed in a 20-year longitudinal study. And the purpose of this particular research report was to examine the relationship between an early diagnosis of ADHD in first grade and the likelihood of experiencing traumatic events in young adulthood. And they wanted to see whether or not the relationship between ADHD and trauma exposure, which we've talked about here before, ADHD does increase the risk of exposure to adverse events traumatic event, they wanted to see if it had anything to do with affiliating with a deviant peer group in adolescence. And so what the study found is that, yes, adolescents with ADHD in first grade were significantly more likely to experience lifetime trauma, trauma exposure in young adulthood and do so significantly more often than individuals not diagnosed with ADHD. So that corroborates what we have seen earlier about ADHD setting an individual up for the likelihood of being traumatized or experiencing adverse consequences. What's important in this study, however, is that they found that the elevated risk for later young adult trauma in the ADHD group was mediated by whether or not they had affiliated with a deviant peer group in late adolescence. So it's this affiliation with deviant peers 
that appears to be one of the situational variables that interacts with ADHD to set the individual up for a much greater likelihood of trauma exposure. So very significant and interesting study there, in my opinion, that comes to us out of Chicago. Okay, everybody, that's it for this Saturday. I may have taken a little bit longer today because I wanted to go into some detail about the background of each of these articles. I think that's important sometimes to give you that kind of context. Uh, but also I want to emphasize this greater role of non-Western countries now in studying ADHD individuals in their countries, showing us that ADHD is, of course, a worldwide phenomenon. All right. Thanks for joining me this Saturday, everybody. I hope you found this research review informative. As always, if you're not a subscriber, think about it. And if you are and you know people who might benefit from this information, kindly recommend this channel to others. But whether or not you do so, as always, I thank you for tuning in for these research reviews. And I'll conclude, as I always do, with live well, be well, and take care, everybody. Bye for now.